Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Babble, babble, babble. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I tell you, J-E-S-U-S. Yes, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Babble, babble, babble. Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Babble, babble, babble. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I tell you, J-E-S-U-S. Yes, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Babble, babble, babble. Welcome to North Valley Baptist Church, to our kids' church. I'm Jim Carey, and I'm so glad to have you with us. I hope you'll enjoy your journey as we look at the book of Exodus together. Today, we'll start with the first lesson. We have 12 lessons total that we have for the book of Exodus, and I hope you'll watch each one. We'll try to put up one a week, and that'll help you. In addition to that, we've already done the book of Genesis, and if you'll go back and look at our main church site, nvbc.org, forward slash kids, then you'll be able to find the website and you'll be able to see all of the lessons that we have for you. In the meantime, I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Exodus, and we want to look at chapter 1. Exodus is the second book in the Bible, and you know that the Bible is divided into books, then chapters, and then verses. We're going to look at the book of Exodus, chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse 8. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8. And before we get started, let's pray together. And as we pray together, I want you to kind of repeat after me, but I want you to think about what we're saying, and I want to help guide you in how to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for my family. Thank you for my church. Thank you for Sunday. And now, God, I pray that you'd help me to listen and to learn something. And then, Lord, help me to live what I learned. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Remember Joseph? He was number two king in Egypt in the book of Genesis. And he helped the people of Israel. And he said unto his people, that was the Egyptians, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on and let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also to our enemies and fight against us. And so they'll get them up out of the land. And therefore they set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. They made them into slaves. But the more they afflicted them, verse 12, the more they hurt them, the more they multiplied and grew. They were God's people. And they were all grieved because of the children of Israel. Our lesson today is God will take care of me. It's an exciting lesson to see how God took care of Moses long ago. So Pharaoh was not happy with these people of Israel and decided to make them slaves and gave them tasks. Yes, the people of Israel were some of the people that helped build some of the pyramids. And the people of Israel helped build some of the cities. And they were afflicted, but the more they were afflicted, the more God blessed them and they multiplied. The Bible says, And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor or to serve hard. Do you see how they're pushing and working And the Egyptian soldiers made them work even harder every day in bondage and mortar and brick and in all manner of service in the field. They had to do it all. They were doing all the work. But God said, the more they afflicted them, the more God said, I'll take care of you. So Pharaoh called out to his people and said, we've got to do something about these people of Israel. And he called the midwives, the Bible says in verses 15 and 16. And he told the midwives, when you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women, 
and you see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then kill him. I don't know how many of you are boys out there, but every single boy born to Israel, born in Egypt during that time, Pharaoh said, kill him. Only the girls are we going to keep. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being born in a country like that where it was against the law to be a baby boy? It's crazy, but it's true. And Pharaoh said, kill them all. But God was in the business of taking care of them. Remember? God said, no, we're going to take care of the people of Israel and the midwives, the ladies who helped deliver the babies, feared God. And they feared God more than they feared Pharaoh. And the Bible says they did not as the king of Egypt commanded, but save the men, children alive. And he called them in and said, why are you doing this? And they said, because we love God. They didn't say it in those words, but they helped him. And then there's a very special man, chapter 2, and we start to hear the story of Moses. He was a man of the house of Levi, and they bear a son. You see the little son? Do you know what his name was? Can you guess? One day his name would be Moses. I'm not sure if that's what his mama called him to begin with, but soon he's going to be called Moses. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Why did she hide him? Because Pharaoh sent his soldiers to find the baby boys and to kill them. She hid him for three months. Can you imagine? Every time the little baby Moses started to cry, Mama would hold his mouth and say, Hush, hush, little boy, you can't make any noise. The soldiers are here you. And she took that little baby and she held him and loved him and prayed every day, God, please save my little baby boy. He's a good boy. God, please save my boy. Well, he got bigger and bigger, and little babies grow. His lungs got stronger and stronger, and at three months old now, when he cried, it was getting to be pretty loud. And babies are going to cry. And she knew that if she didn't take that baby and do something with him, the soldiers would come and kill him and maybe kill her and her husband as well. And the day came where she sadly began to make a little ark. She made a little cradle. And the Bible says she took tar and she wiped it on that little cradle. And she made it waterproof as best she could. And then when she did what no mother should ever have to do, she took her little baby to the River Nile. And she took her little baby and prayed, God, help my little baby. You promised to take care of us. Lord, please take care of my baby. And she put her little baby in that water. And then I know she walked and turned away. She did not want to see what happened to that baby. In that river Nile are crocodiles. They could eat that little baby. In that river Nile, that boat could get knocked over and the little baby will drown. And she couldn't stand to see what was about to happen to her little boy. But she told her daughter, Moses' sister, he said, watch, sit here and watch and tell me. I don't want to see it happen, but please watch my baby and see if God will somehow Take care of my baby. She let that little baby go. I wonder what's going to happen. Is that little baby going to die? Will the crocodiles find him before anybody else does? No, God said, I'll take care of you. Sometimes it gets scary in our world. These days, there's a lot of sickness. And it might be that you're afraid of that sickness, but I want to tell you that God says, 
He'll take care of us. And I know grandma might get sick. But it'll be okay. If she's a Christian, God says, I'll take care of you. You say, but grandma, I prayed that she'd get well. And she died. Oh, I know. But God took care of her. Because sometimes God takes care of you down here on this earth. And you get sick and you get well. But sometimes you get sick down here on this earth and God takes care of you and takes you to heaven. I have a friend who had cancer. And we prayed that God would take that cancer away. And God said, I will. Just not down here. And today my friend is in heaven. And there's no cancer at all. He can run and play and have a great time. Yes, not so long ago I had a friend that had a bad heart. And we prayed that God would help him to get well. And God said, I'll take care of him, but it wasn't on this earth. And one day that man died and he went to heaven. But he's in heaven today and his heart works just perfect. God did take care of him. And there's some people that are getting the flu or even the COVID flu. Some of those God's going to raise up and they're going to get well. But if they're a Christian, one way or the other, they'll get well either in heaven or on this earth. And so we're not to fret about that. God knows what's best. And God knew what was best for the little baby Moses. And God had a plan. Because who should be down there at the river but Pharaoh's daughter? Pharaoh's daughter was down at the river and she heard a noise. She said, that's a baby crying. She called one of her servants and said, what is that noise? Go find that noise and bring it to me. And the Bible says the servant brought that little baby. And when she had opened up that ark, she saw the child and behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion or love on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. I am going to keep it. I'm going to make it mine. And then his sister, Moses' his sister, was sitting over in the bushes and she said, uh, uh, Mrs. Pharaoh, would you like me to find somebody to babysit for you? You're a very busy lady and take care of that baby and change his diapers and raise that baby. Would you like me to find somebody? And of course, she said yes. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went. And called the child's mother. Moses' mother got to raise him. And she didn't have to worry about the soldiers. And she even got paid to do it. You see how God had a plan? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. And I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it and brought him before Pharaoh. And he became her son. And here's where Moses got his name. And she called his name Moses. Because I drew him out of the water. And she loved Moses and raised Moses for the first 40 years of his life. And God took a little baby that should have died. And made him the son of the king of Egypt. An amazing story. Do you ever wonder if God wants to take care of you? Well, God showed us he took care of that little baby Moses. And God will certainly take care of you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for taking care of Moses. Thank you for taking care of me. And Lord, thank you for taking care of those I love. Help me to learn to trust you and to love you more. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now God promised to take care of us, but do you know he only promised to take care of those who were saved and on their way to heaven? And as I look at you today, are you sure you're on your way to heaven? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? 
If you have, you can count on the promises of God. God promises he'll never leave or forsake us. If you've not been saved, why don't you get saved today? You can ask your mom or your dad to show you how to ask Jesus into your heart the Bible way. Or if you can't find another way, you can get some help. You can look online where we've shown you. And there you can see how to find your way to heaven. I've taken the time to sit down with you in a Bible and show you how to get saved. And if you get saved, will you do me a favor? Send me an email. Send me a note. And tell me that you got saved so I can pray for you and be encouraged with you. And if you're saved and you know it, I want you to trust God. For God will take care of you. Now, let's, if you've got a brother or sister there, let's compete with each other. I had a friend that was looking at the review and says he always misses one. Let's find out if you can get them all right today. Are you ready? Here we go. First question. Were you listening? What did Pharaoh say to do to all of the boy babies? And if you're a girl or a sister out there, it's easy to say, kill them. Every last one of them. Yeah, those boys are too much trouble, aren't they? What did baby Moses' mom do to help him live a little longer? Do you remember? Well, of course, she put him in a basket. She hid him, and then she put him in a basket in the river Nile. Who discovered the baby Moses in the water? Do you remember? Who was it? We don't know her name, but we know she was Pharaoh's daughter. What did Pharaoh's daughter do to the baby? She took him as her own. She adopted him. Made him a child of the king. Who did Moses' sister call to nurse the baby? Remember, that was Moses' mom, his real mother. What book of the Bible records this story? Do you remember? Right here. The book of Exodus. How are you doing? We've got one last question. Can you get them all right? What can we learn from this story? Remember what it said on the title? God will take care of me. Thank you so much for coming to our junior church. I hope you'll watch our other programs. God bless you.